Nah, we can roll it now. Dr. Bob, I got to ask you this now. Mm -hmm. I got this is what I got to ask you. How are we going to stop this crime? We talked about the, the second congressional district, and that's fine. But I believe African Americans put too much emphasis on electoral politics yeah. and not on raising our children in public schools. You know, you sent, two, two, you sent your children to school through mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. uh, let's face it. Most of our children are being undereducated, mm -hmm. miseducated. Mm -hmm. and, in, and in this globalized world we live in, we are going to be in the lurch. We as African Americans are definitely, if we're not in the lurch now, we're going to be in the lurch because we're not educating enough African American young people. Well, there is two sides to this whole question. It's a structural side, that is, the structure and, uh, of the society, i.e. the government, the uh, lack of money, the lack of jobs, etc. And the other side, of course, is the cultural side. And that is, what are we as individual family members going to do to help? Now, obviously, uh, the right wing in this, this uh, society always refers to the cultural side, saying, in effect, that there's something endemic in the um, African-American psyche and in our DNA that we're just basically inferior people. And we know that's a lie. We know that there is a need to have some structural changes in this society, i.e. black people need more jobs, we need to raise ourselves out of poverty, etc. But at the same time, as parents, as adults, as teachers, as leaders, as ministers in our society, we've got to do something about the cultural side. We've got to change our minds, we've got to change our, our spirit we got to change our whole attitude and behavior to make sure our children are educated, that they stay in school, that they uh, become what the potential, fulfill the potential in this society. So uh, the basic problem is structurally we got to get rid of the guns and drugs in our community. Guns and drugs, you better believe gotta that. Got to get rid of that. But at the same time, we got to change our behavior as parents. And we gotta reinstitute those values that made us survive all this time uh, since the beginning uh, of slavery, through the slave regime, and after slavery. Uh, we survived because we had good values, and and we believed in family. We stuck to our uh, values, and that's what made us survive. But we cannot survive as a group of people until we get back to those basic spiritual. Uh, and cultural value. You hit it right on the head. So people mm -hmm. talk about we had to stop this crime in Chicago, and you know everybody Chicago's world known for being the murder capital of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told people that a long time ago. I said Barack Obama will, be will become president, but we'll still kill each other. We mm -hmm. African Americans will still kill each other in the city of Chicago, and we're doing it to stabilize. And you and you gave us the prescription mm -hmm. to stop the crime. It really comes down to me, and you can chime in on your opinion, mm -hmm. is that you we have to raise mannerable children mm -hmm. that can read at grade level. Right. It's very basic. Right, right, right. Well, no. How you get that mama, that, that 35-year-old grandmama, or that 25, 20-year-old mama, mm -hmm. to say, baby, your little girls and your little boys got to read at grade level, mm -hmm. and you got to teach them to be mannerable. Mm -hmm. we got to have responsible fathers, not just uh, Sperm donors. <laughs> you know, sperm donors, but fathers. you got to have mothers who are willing and able to raise children uh, properly to make sure that they go to school, that they learn, that they understand the history of their people, and that they are willing then to go on and form families. Because it's at the base of it is our spiritual, uh, African spirituality, and the base of the family. If we can get those two things back online, we, we have a chance of, of the, Professor Bob, I was born in the 60s, raised in the 70s, so I caught the whiff of the uh, Black Power Movement and the um, Civil Rights Movement as a kid. So back in the day, 40 years ago, we had the sense of up, uplifting the race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we all spread out now because segregation is over where we can live anywhere and marry anybody we want, all that kind of stuff. That's fine. But we've lost the sense right. of uplifting the race. I don't care if you live in Plainfield or Naperville. Right. Right. We've lost the sense of mm -hmm. how do we gain this sense? Even if it's just even just poor black people in the city of Chicago, how do we get them to gain the sense of uplifting the race? Well, we've we've unfortunately uh, 
bought into the notion that we are in a post-racial society. We are. And secondly, <laughs> we have bought into the notion that everything has changed. Yeah. The reality is racism still exists in America. We are still in a raci racist society, even though we are uh, different from 40 years ago, i.e., Things have changed and yeah. on the surface, but, but the structure hasn't the structure changed. Has People not said, really "It's changed. not some white person being point. mean to you." Precisely. We're talking about a structure. Mm -hmm. how, how do you how do you explain it to uneducated people about the structure of racism and white supremacy? That's right. really hard. Without saying, "Well, you don't like my white friends," I ain't saying that about your white friends. That's mm -hmm. hard to explain. But we're talking about a structure mm -hmm. of racism. Well, well, the structure is institutional racism, which says, in effect, that individuals do not have to be a racist towards you, the system can do it to you, i.e., uh, an example, when you go to take an exam for a job, it's not the individual administering the job that is racist, it's the system, the test itself is racist, the, the interview uh, procedure is racist, the uh, procedure from walking from in, in the door to the job is a racist system. Uh, that is designed to screen you out. So therefore, uh, it is no longer individual yeah. racism. It's in, the institution can do to you. But I could what be wrong. The, is, what let me ask you a question. What the individual could not possibly do to you. I'm sorry for, oh, I'm sorry for speaking uh, and, and cutting you off. But is capitalism, capitalism inherently racist? Well, yes, in, in the sense that it's classist. That is, is based on a class system where uh, the rich maintain their whole system and, of course, the poor uh, are kept at, at, at a level uh, of, of poverty. So it, it, racism and capitalism work extremely well together. Right. Very, very, very well together. And that's hard to explain that to a young right. woman who's twenty year old, 20 year old woman with a 5 year old baby, little little mm -hmm. kid mm -hmm. to say, you know what, they can predict your future, your son or daughter's future by the zip code you live. Because mm -hmm. they're not going to give your school the resources and the right. resources not there other people have. Right. So it behooves you in spite of the resources, in spite of a failing public school, you got to read at grade level and your kid got to be mannerable. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that to somebody? So, something as well, basic as that. Well, you try and you, you show them examples uh, of, again, the institutional uh, examples as well as the cultural examples uh, that that are, are out there and staring us in the face, and I think the, a lot of uh, the whole thing is 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 what we see on television, what we uh, you know the, the games our kids play, and of course the whole music scene. I mean, if we could get rid of some of this really crazy music, the rap and the lifestyle of many of the rap artists is really detrimental to our children. Uh, most people don't, don't want to face that, but you know, uh, there's nothing redeemable, in my opinion, in following the example of Nicki Minaj. And those, <laughs> you mean, don't like Nicki Minaj? You know, Nicki some Minaj. of the rappers, I mean... I know. You are like an old man. Right. You are like an old man. Oh, I am. <laughs> uh, I have no problem. I mean, people You know what the right. problem with her? We don't have enough balance. Right. You don't have nothing to juxtapose Nicki Minaj. Well, Nicki Minaj. Again, and, and we she don't have a balance. A right, yeah. She has a right to do. Uh, yeah, right. To do what she wants. But to guess do what? She, I bet. I bet her. If she had children, I don't know if she has children. I, mm -hmm. See, that's the whole thing about the rappers. Mm -hmm. I bet you their children are going to go to good schools. There you go. They're going to be mannerable, right. and they'll read at grade level. That is true. See, that's the that's game true. that we don't understand. Right. We see them acting the fool, right. but I bet you they children. They. Go be mannerable and right. get the best grades they possibly can. Right. So, right. I, so how do people? Well, how do we? How, I hope some of the rappers tell the people the truth. It's all the big game they're playing on you. Right. But because we we act like a thug with our pants down. Right. But believe me, our kids gonna go to private. I've talked to rappers and their kids go to private schools in Atlanta and whatnot. And they live in the <laughs> suburbs. That's right. They live in the suburb. Right. So they play. Yeah. They, it's all the game. It's the the game. kids should know it's all right. the big game. And they're making money off of us, right? Yeah. And structurally. African Americans do not control the recording industry. Well, well, the recording control industry nothing. is controlled by about five companies, yeah. international, yeah. and they push the thugism, the foolishness, and, and the foolishness as a way of selling the records, and we buy into it. But the problem is 
that, as you said, it's all a game, but the problem is the uh, young people who buy into that right. become the victims of that kind of uh, foolishness. And it's, it's very detrimental to our group. Um, you think uh, we, uh, to close out the conversation, mm -hmm. is it hopeless? No, I think there is hope. I think there is hope. I think that, uh, you know, we, we, will, we, will, we will bounce back. It's going to be a rough going for a while. But I think in the end, we will prevail. And we shouldn't wait on a messianic leader to lead us out of this no. morass. But I think the, the real thing is we've got to change our minds. We've got to change our spirit. We've got to go back to the values that made us survive as African people from the beginning of time to the present. And if we don't go back to those African values and African spirituality and understand that we as a people must survive, and the only way we are going to survive is by coming together, having our, renewing that African spirituality, we're not going to survive. Thank you.